the Third Heaven Traveler, Andrew Sheets, with you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. I pray that eyes be opened, and Lord, those whom you've called, Lord, to have an understanding and to walk in truth, Father, may this be of great benefit to them. And Lord, as Paul prayed, I pray that all Israel, Lord, I pray that Israel, actually staying with Scripture, Father, I pray that Israel will be saved. In Jesus' precious name. Even so, come soon, Lord. Amen. Maranatha. The false prophets talking to Israel in the same way they did in Jeremiah's day. This blog is about the spiritual life of Jesus Christ in us who believe on him and applying this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross for our sins. If we believe this, we're saved. And that he was buried and that he arose again on the third day. If we believe these three very important facts, we are saved. That's it. There's nothing more to be added. No works. Please read my studies about how there's so many false gospels. That's the gospel, people. Gospel simply means the good news of our salvation, our redemption, bringing our, bringing our fallen state back to God as it was in the beginning before the fall. When Jeremiah preached of the coming destruction, many false prophets of the day disputed Jeremiah's words as false, and they preached the opposite to calm the fears of the people. I highly, strongly encourage you, reader and listener, to go read Jeremiah. It takes some time. It's quite lengthy. And Jeremiah is not a book you can read and just kind of go through it relatively fast. You have to have notes. Notes meaning some good, solid KJV commentary would certainly help because Jeremiah goes back and forth. He goes to the future millennium because he's in the spirit. God is timeless. There's no dimensions with God. He's multi-dimensional, multi present, past, future, time eternal, past and future. And Jeremiah is talking about events that are going on, will be going on to the people of Judea and Jerusalem, and will be happening in the future, even in our future, in the millennial kingdom to come. So, but to stay focused on what we're talking about now in this realm we're at right now, listen to the amazing connection, people. In Jeremiah chapter 23, it is written, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. This is very ominous and very scary because what I'm going to read, you're going to see these false pastors, preachers, teachers, these false rab well, rabbis that are teaching this, and these Judas goats that are out there manipulating the word of God, preaching a different gospel, using the kingdom gospel. See my notes. There is a difference between the kingdom gospel, the dispensation of the kingdom. When Jesus Christ came, John the Baptist proclaimed it to the gospel of today. There's so much false teaching, so much leaven, and God will hold all those accountable. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock, and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, and shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. 
I want to stop here. The likes of Amir Chesfati and these other false teachers are all telling Israel that, hey, now they've come back. God's brought them all back. We're having our great prosperity of our time. This people, listen, this is not even close to what Israel will experience in the millennial kingdom. This is future. Right now, this is just a short time gathering to amaze the world, to show that God is in power, and soon the time of Jacob's trouble comes. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. This is Jesus Christ, people. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. Do you think this is now? No. Israel will does not, is not dwelling safely now. They're continually, constantly under threat. They've been fighting for their existence. Do you think that Judah is saved now? And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. They shall say no more. They shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I had been driven from them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Yes, this happened in 1948. Do you see how throughout the entire book, uh, uh, book of Jeremiah, in the 47, 48, whatever chapters, th we find ourselves really having to watch what time and what people were talking about in the era. Mind heart. Now, this... I believe the Lord is showing us this was during Jeremiah's time, and this also reflects now. Listen to this. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because the Lord, because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Jeremiah, they called him the weeping prophet. He was heartbroken. He was shocked because he ple he pleaded with his people over and over. He saw the apostasy, the f just the absolute, complete debauchery, the state that Israel was in. His people, when I say Israel, this is Judea, the southern kingdom now. And even though they had their <clears throat> mighty temple, and this is what was really causing the big problem. They th thought, since Jerusalem had its mighty walls about, since Jerusalem had the temple, yeah, they were so amazingly proud of their temple. They said, no harm will ever come to us because we, God is with us. This is it. We're there. We're protected. God will never bring destruction upon his temple. They, didn't, <clears throat> they couldn't care less about what happened to the northern kingdoms some 70 years earlier by the Assyrians, because they said, we have our temple. We're hiding in our laws within our tabernacle, well, our temple. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane, Listen to this, people. The prophets were sold out. The priests that were completely apostate sold out. The king was wicked. Every It was just to the rotten to the core. Jerusalem at this point was rotten to the core. Notice that it was when a godly man of God or woman stands up, they're against the odds. When I make commentary... To the likes of Amir Tesfati telling young Christians, don't call yourself Christians. When I hear Joel Rosenberg pimping the Abraham peace accord 
when I see Joel Rosenberg embracing Chris Lamb, which the Pope is now embrace it. See my notes. I'm jumping ahead. I call it out. And yet I'm called out just as Jeremiah was called out. How dare you? You are. Yeah. I've seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and they cursed my people Israel to err. They caused my people Israel to err. People, these false prophets and these people were worshiping Baal, the Phoenician God, the, the, the God where, where literally the Israelites sacrificed their children and fire. The pagan god Baal demanded blood, human sacrifice. It is here that I need to stop and tell you modern Bible translations come from the same root of Alexandria that the Trinity, the pagan concept of Trinity came from and this came from from the second century from Tertullian who came from the same bloodlines where the worship of Baal started there in Phoenicia. The Lord just put it on my heart to share this. There are connections. And it says, I've seen also the prophets of Jerusalem, an horrible thing. They commit adultery. They walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. And none doth return from his wickedness. They all of them, all of them unto me as Sodom and inhabitants thereof of, as Gomorrah. That is pretty bad, people. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem and profaneness go gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets. Don't listen to them that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. Vain is comes from vanity, which means absolute, utter worthlessness. Utterly worthless. They make you vain. They speak a vision in their own heart and not of their mouth, saith the Lord. <clears throat> they say, still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace, and they shall say, and they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. Let's stop here and look at what does First Thessalonians five three say? When they say shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them as a woman in travail. Do we see a connection here? I pray so. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days. Ye shall consider it perfectly. This is applying to then when Jerusalem was destroyed and it applies to now and to the future I have not sent these. Now, now this is God saying, listen to this. this. These are the false prophets. God saying, I didn't send these prophets. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their evil of the evil of their doings. Stop here. How many false teachers today, they don't correct their 
error of their people. They don't teach false or correction. They don't teach correct biblical doctrine and how to divide the word of God. They mix dispensations. They strive unlawfully. See my study on striving lawfully. See why this is such a burden on my heart because I wasted, and, and believe me, I wasted 20 years of my life in the new apostolic reformation movement and the prosperity gospel and the make Israel great again. I was a Zionist with the best of them. And then I woke up. But no teacher back then would correct that. But they taught me wrongly. In verse 23, am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, God forbid, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How many of these YouTube teachers do you see? I had a dream, I had a dream, I had a dream. And then apply it directly to prophecy. Now, need something clarification here. There's nothing wrong with a child of God having a dream that aligns perfectly with scripture to confirm where sometimes, many times, God will tell his servants in a dream that lines up directly with scripture. Whenever you hear someone say, I have a dream, pull your Bible out and make sure it lines up. But these false prophets were dreaming dreams and they were telling the people, no, 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 God, we're going to, Babylon is going to join into alliance. Egypt will come and help us. We're all going to be one happy family. Everything's fine. The temple will be great. Continue forever. Don't listen to lies. We shall have our greatest days ahead. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet? Of the prophets that prophesy lies. Yea, they have prophets of deceit of their own heart, which think they cause, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, and their fathers have forgotten, have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am am against the prophet, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. I'm against the prophet, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. God forbid. These, these prophets were literally saying, thus saith the Lord, the Lord told me, and then spew lies. And God's now speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah's putting this out. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor I command, nor did I command them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, he's talking to Jeremiah, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet and priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man in his house. Thus saith ye, say every one to his neighbor and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God and the Lord of hosts our God. 
So the burden of the Lord is what is been given and placed on your heart. What is the, on the Lord's mind? No, God's saying, no, their own burden, they're going to bear. I have nothing else to say to them. But since you say the burden of the Lord, therefore you show the burden of the Lord I've sent unto you, ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, even I will forget you, utterly forget you, and will forsake you and the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach unto you, a perpetual shame, which shall not be forgiven. Amen. And here is just, just a sample. Um, I didn't bother bringing up the scriptures where literally Jeremiah, if you translate it, he was literally dipped, put into a dungeon with no food and water and where all of the sewage of the city was dumped in here and he was just up to his neck high in sewage and he was beaten and just but here's just one I just pulled this out and Jeremiah 21 Jeremiah kept preaching and he kept getting punched beaten kicked ridiculed shut up shut up shut up and God kept telling him get back out there son go back and tell him what to say get back out there tell him what I told you to say and look at this verse 20 a correction, verses 1 and 2 of chapter 20 of Jeremiah. Now Pasher, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also the chief governor in the house of the Lord. I'm going to repeat, this is the chief governor in the house of the Lord. He heard Jeremiah's prophesying, what Jeremiah was prophesying, and then he smote, that means he punched him, slapped him, beat him, the prophet Put him in stocks. That's not cuffs, people. That's where his hands are locked, his feet are locked. That were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. So right there, so everyone can see, this is a guy who's preaching false, but yet he was God's appointed. This is what's happening. People, today, we've got troubled rabbis. We've got rabid evangelicals. Uh, like the likes of Hagee, they're teaching false teachings ranging from Israel won't be going through the time of Jacob's trouble and dual covenant theology. Jews don't need Jesus to be saved. We got like, see all my links. Uh, I could go, there's more and more and more. Jacob crash. Oh, no, no, no. The church, the church will be with Jacob. The church will not abandon uh, Jacob in the time of Jacob's trouble. No, 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 no. It's, yeah. And don't forget Joel Rosenberg. He's pimping this Abrahamic peace agreement. This is the covenant of death, or will be part of it. And also, look at his ecumenism in Chrislam. Please read this link, people. I'm going to click on here. He's a Judas goat. This new religion of Abrahamia. Read these links. The Abraham Accords, it's a peace agreement. It's part of an ever ongoing elusive peace plan that Israel yearns for. And it's they're going to be their covenant with death. Read Isaiah 28, 18, which will be the same, which will be later signed as the, the actual signing of that covenant puts it in force. And it will later be broken by the same Antichrist during the seven year tribulation. Scriptures are all in here. Oh, there's teaching, false teaching going out there, by the way, that Daniel 9.27, that he, when it says, and he shall confirm, there's false teaching that this is Jesus Christ. God forbid, please, people, this is the Antichrist. This ongoing Abraham Accord peace plan, it's clearly spoken of. It's not a good thing. Look, I said before, First Thessalonians 5.3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. This is language taken directly from the Abraham Accords, peace and stability, or, and I use the KJV, which says security, but it's the same thing. Look it up. I've done it. It's the same exact word. I even put in here, the, taking the Greek word back and how it's translated and what it means. True Christians realize that the peace agreement is not good. It's not a good thing, people. But Joel Rosenberg says it is. 
I have all the links. Please read. Joe Rosenberg says, don't eat. Not only is it a great thing, but guess what? He says all Christians must pray for the peace and security of Israel. Yes, he said that. Read it. And no one even pays one mind iota to that, but they just pump him up and keep buying his books and keep promoting him. And all the evangelicals slobber up to him. The politicians, the neocon right wing, neocons slobber up to him, hold him on, make Israel great, oh, Zionism, Zionism, Zionism. Uh oh, if you're not a Zionist, a, if you're not Zionist, a Zionist, you're anti Semitic. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Please read my studies. Anti Zionism is not anti Semitism. God forbid. Read my links. Why can't people see clearly who Joel Rosenberg is? And people, I don't care. I don't. I, if he, yes, of course he's a great author. He's a genius. He's an awesome writer. I don't read his books; they're not my thing. But I certainly read what he writes in his blogs. Oh yes, and study what I wrote. It will blow your mind. I spent a two-week sabbatical. All I did was research Joel Rosenberg. The ecumenism, ecumenism people means bringing all religions into one. He slobbers all over the Pope. He loves the United Arab Emirates, the whole Saudi bringing it all in of Arabs coming in. He loves bringing in the, I said the Pope, he brings in the Muslims. He's bringing in the Jews. He's got... Uh, even rabbis applaud him. He's he, he whenever he writes a piece, man, it's all over the major outlets. Herod's uh, Jerusalem Post. It's there. Do, do, do read your blogs. Uh, read my blogs, please. But why can't people say this is see that this is all part of the new world order? It's their compliant plan, and he's constantly pimping it. He doesn't stop. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing, people, or more accurately, a Judas goat. Why did Ambassador David Friedman, a modern-day Orthodox Jew, choose the Trinity Broadcast Network to, pro, to co-produce groundbreaking series of the Abraham Accords? Wow. If I have to tell anybody about the evil empire of Trinity Broadcasting Network, then God help you. I'll just say it's all I'm going to say. And Trinity, what a word, man. Study. That came from the second century. It's pagan theology of polytheism. It is not the biblical Godhead. Jesus Christ is the visible image of God. That's Godhead. Jesus Christ is not God the Son. It's not in Scripture. And Trinitarians will make you believe that. See my detailed studies. Oh, what does this have to do with the false prophets? If you can't see this, I pray. I will pray for you. But back on David Friedman, he's an Orthodox Jew, people. He's pumping the Abraham Accords. Yes. Oh, yes. Read my links. Read it. It will shock you. It did me. There's no. There are. Uh, correction, of course there are direct, true biblical connections to what the article writes and in these links here. Of course. It just proves God's sense of humor. Read Psalms chapter 2. And the irony that's being played out directly to the Antichrist coming and soon coming time of Jacob's trouble. They're playing right into it. In these last days, we are seeing the same thing as Jeremiah was dealing with. Okay, I won't take any more time. This is extensive, extensive on the whole thing here. Let me go back. To the false prophets, the false prophets talking to Israel in the same manner. So we have our background set, listener, reader. The prophets were telling Judea, you're safe, Jerusalem. You're safe, Jerusalem. You, we've got the temple. No, God's not going to punish us. There's not going to be judgment. 
Joel Rosenberg saying, come on, embrace this. Now, got to open this link here. The new religion of Abrahamia. Abraham Amia. This is Christlam people. What some are calling the new religion of Abrahamia is none other than Christlam, and the Abrahamic family house will be its centerpiece. Look, a picture's worth a thousand words. There it is. There it is. There's Christian, Muslim, and uh, there's Christian and Muslim, and the Jews are waiting in arms for this. And there we go. It's a better picture right here. Right here. Here it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's Netanyahu. There's Trump's right hand man, uh, the young man. Uh, what? Well, just drew a blank on his name. Oh, he not in the centerpiece of the news anymore. Believe me, he's still in the background. He he has his office there at six six six. There in uh, Manhattan. Recently, in this era of conspiracy theor theories, a vogue, particularly after the onset of COVID pande pandemic, I received a message on WhatsApp. The message gave me a, a report that was published by the BBC Hindi that details about a new religion introducing itself. Anyway, I'll let you read it all, but it does include Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Here he is right there. There's your big, big, here's your huge Zionist here. Read my thing, MAGA, Make America Great, Make Israel Great, the Kabbalist Zionist, and that Trump coalition. Is forming the Zionist state, saying that the new religion might be a follow-up plan to the ancient Campbell's document to force people to acquiesce and normalize relations with Israel. Yeah, they're peace, 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 peace. But read this. Uh, my dear brother, Jeffrey Godfrey Greider, he has, I'm sure all my readers are very familiar with, Now the End Begins. Oh, my goodness. I, we have authorization to, to share this. I promoted it, and I put it in my study here. Take the time to read this. It will blow your mind. And by the way, uh, Jeffrey is a King James Version only. He's solid. He's solid. His eschatology, everything here. So one of my readers uh, in uh, on uh, YouTube, a uh, correction on my blog, on blogs on my blog here, he sent me some really interesting notes. He said it's shocking to see those who belong to Jesus Christ know the truth. I, um, it, I, I'm sorry, I wrote this. I said, it's really shocking. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen, Maranatha. But he's saying, this website is denying that Israel will go through Jacob's trouble during the Great Tribulation. Let's just take a look here. All right, here we go. All right, let's open this up. Let's take a little look. Restored for destruction? Is the time of Jacob's trouble really still ahead of us? So this Jürgen Bueller, he's the president of the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, okay? False teacher. I won't read the whole article to you, but please read this carefully. What he's trying to tell the Jews and, and evangelicals are lapping this up. Every scripture that says that Israel is going to get wiped out, only, two, only a third of them are going to come out of fire, people. Read all my studies and links. I'm not going to go through the whole thing step by step. And he's saying, oh, this is not going to be this way. What the scripture is saying, it really doesn't mean this. He's saying that everything that says what it says doesn't really mean it. But how he does it, it's so tricky because what he does, he says it's taken out of context. It's misrepresented and it's not the correct translation. Um, and that 
the actual time of Jacob's trouble. We've already, Israel's already gone through it. They've already been through hell and back, people. This isn't, this isn't them. And he, of course, he has to address Jeremiah, because Jeremiah goes through it in detail. Of course, he has to dismiss Isaiah's and Ezekiel's and Zechariah's prophecy. He had to cover them all. And then he goes through, oh, no, this is the new paradigm. It's going to favor Zion. Look at this. This is exactly what the Old Testament prophets and false prophets, uh, I should say, the false prophets and, and these priests were doing in Jeremiah's time. Exactly the opposite of what is written. They turn everything around. Hey, Israel, you're not going to go through Jacob's trouble. It says, we're committed here at the Christian embassy, declaring God's mercy and faithfulness to Israel and all the nations. Yeah, we're declaring that a new season of restoration has started. <clears throat> we're challenging the church to join God in this great restoration work with Israel. Oh my goodness. This is how Amir, Tisfati, and all those reprobates, they cash in on pump the bucks into Israel, be in God's plan. Help us. Look at this. We are declaring that a new season of restoration has started. We're challenging the church. I am the church. I am the body of Christ. You reprobate right in this article. I'm not, I am no way joining in your restoration work. And I, it says to join God. God is not joining you, you liar. You who wrote this article. What's your name again? Jurgen Bueller, president of the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. You are lying to the Jews. You're warming up to them. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear. Now, wait till you read this other article I want to give you. And you're lying to them the way the prophets lied in Jeremiah's time. Oh, yeah. All the catastrophes and the hell that Israel went through in 70 AD. Uh-huh. You're saying, yep, we've already gone through it. We finished it. No. No. The apostle Paul, on the other hand, declares that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Uh -huh, for God, God, God died for me. God died. That's what the apostle Paul. It, it, you're lying to these people. And declare to Israel a new chapter started, which will lead not to further judgment, but to all of Israel being saved. Now, see, perfect example on the screen here. Please see this. This is a perfect example of the false teachers they speak. This is the truth now. Yes, God, that all of Israel be saved. Let's clarify that. He says what is written in Scripture in Romans, correction, it's Romans chapter 10, I'm sorry. Yep, that's what I thought. That's why I even had to recheck it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel as that they might be saved. Yeah. And he's saying that all Israel, that's not scripture. All of Israel will not be saved. All of Israel will not be saved. Paul prays that Israel be saved. And I had to correct myself in my prayer, Lord. Thank you. I've studied your word, Lord. It's here I have to stop. Read Romans chapter 9, 27. Isaiah the prophet cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Wow. A remnant? They're not all going to be saved. Zechariah 13, 9 says that only a third of them are going to come out. And these false prophets are saying, no, I know it says that, but it doesn't mean that. Okay, well, just like Jeremiah told them, Jeremiah told them, God has told me this, it's written. We now have what was written. But they said, no, 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 no. That's not, and they changed it around.
So websites denying Israel go through. Okay, and I've seen many Jews argue the sort of dual. Now let's talk about this dual covenant thing. This is what John Hagee was doing. And he even had it in his book and he had to change it around saying he was misquoted. But the truth is, they're teaching that, hey, the Jews will not need Jesus Christ to be saved. No, they got their own program with God. Uh, okay, not their own program. This is replacement theology. No, their own program. Yes, yes. God is going to deal with Israel separately from the church. But when their own program for salvation, they still have to come to the cross. Jesus Christ, they've got to come and be broken or the rush, the rock will crush them to powder. And then also, if you try to convert Jews, that's anti-Semitic. Yeah. Read the links right here. Here it is right here. Now, as I open this link, see my other links here? I go into how, do you guys remember Ari Flesher during uh, Bush's administration? He was the chief of staff. Uh, or let's see, he was someone on Bush's uh, cabinet there. I think it was the chief of staff, but whatever. He he was the one who said, hey, don't worry, Christians. Don't worry. Don't worry. Amer uh, American Christians, they don't want to convert you. They don't want to convert you because they know you have your own relationship with God. So anyway. This article in Jerusalem Post, it says, I have a debate coming up with my friend and public antagonist, Dr. Michael Brown. You know my sting on him. I expose him. I'm talking about him more. Michael Brown is a Judaizer. He's a repackaged, retreaded. He's just retread Judaizer. Messianic Jew who plays the part of the Christian. He throws the J word Jesus around. He will use some words of grace, but he preaches the kingdom gospel, mixes in a little bit of the gospel Paul preached, uses a little bit of law in here and there, says we got to know our Jewish roots. No, we don't, Dr. Brown. The, anyway, it's all in my links. So this man, uh, rabbi, this rabbi by the name of Shmuley, Botich back in 2019 was going to debate Dr. Brown and it's all a big farce these debates I'll talk about later but anyway um, listen to this right here many in the Jewish community have questions have questioned the efficacy of making even sound arguments to those they assume won't accept them especially if by doing so we provide a platform for those who speak openly, as Brown errantly does, to bring Jews to Jesus. What's the big problem here? The big problem is these rabbis have a problem. He says, anyone who's read the Christian Bible will no doubt be alarmed by the demonization of the Jewish people that served for many centuries to enforce anti-Semitic acts and attitudes practiced throughout Christendom. Historically, countless Christian massacres, persecutions, and the omnipotent anti-Semitic attitudes purveyed by preachers and popes alike were defunded as, are defended as following naturally from Christian scripture that, above all else, blamed the Jews for murdering Jesus. And yet, in our time, Christian evangelicals have emerged as the foremost allies of the Jewish people in general, and the state of Israel in particular. To the contrary, the political left, many of whom denigrate Christianity, espouse an irrational hatred of Israel that is utterly out of step with their liberal liberal values. How can this be? So he goes on. So what this rabbi is doing is showing that all of the references in the New Testament, it's really anti-Semitic and people have not understood it correctly. No problem. The Pope re has reevaluated and has written that the New Testament scriptures really isn't what it says. 
They take the 450 examples of anti-Semitic verses throughout the Gospels, and uh, the Pope has said that we've reevaluated these, and uh, they really don't say what they say. It's really not Israel. It really wasn't the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees. They're not the ones who really did this. Uh, actually, this, these were just metaphors. These are shadows that contrast between good and evil. Yeah, you can't make this up. Read this carefully. It was actually the Jews are the good guys. Yep, the monsters were really the Romans. Yep, yep. And all these scriptures are talking about the, all these terrible things that the Jews did to Jesus. That's really not true what was written. Again, false teaching. Now, again, read my links. This is not saying you're anti-Semitic if you say, yes, it was the Pharisees, it was Caiaphas, the chief priest, who wasn't even in the Levitical lineage of uh, Aaron. Yes, they brought Christ to crucifixion, but it was God's perfect plan. We don't go around, true Christians, believers, don't go around saying, oh, the Jews murdered Jesus. Uh, no, it was all God's plan. His people received him not. This reader of mine, J.E., he tried to post this article on the Free Republic and got banned for it. Yeah, trust me, the Zionist control media people. So I thanked him for his comment. And I'm going to open this link. Please read this link, the true gospel. No one understands the true gospel today. The gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of God, the grace of God. It's they're not the same people. Read, read, read. And there's dialogue goes back and forth. Now, about the straw man argument. What's happening here? This Dr. Brown, he is very interesting. He is just like... Tesfati, he's a forefront, he's what I call window dressing, the front of what Zionism is. And they both wear a title of Messianic, uh, where Amir actually tried to come out, but he couldn't because he had people actually listening, trying to tell Christians don't use that word, uh, we can't use that word. Where Brown realizes, wow, I got to kind of fade in more. But Brown has these debates where if you don't carefully look at it with the intuition of the Holy Spirit, you would think that he's defending the faith. He's really a great defender of the faith. But Brown's really not. Study carefully what how a straw man argument works, which is creating a false narrative, and you build up the good guy versus the bad guy, which is Hegelian dialectic. You have in the this thesis, the antithesis, now, the antithesis is this rabbi who's going to have this debate with Dr. Brown. And the synthesis is what they want to come out of this is you want they want you to come out with the saying, wow, we really do have deep roots in Judaism and we really have to embrace that. And yes, there is something we have to hold on to. Because the guy who wrote the article I just read to you, the Shmuley, he's the one that wrote this. Uh, I got to go back. Hold on real quick. Look at this. Yeah, here he is right here. Shmuley Botek. He's the one that wrote that book, The Kosher Jesus, or something like that. He is the one who really understands that you have to bring in the Christians into the Zionist movement. Use this as useful idiots, trust me. And he's trying to debate and did debate Dr. Brown. If you truly look and study how that works, in fact, let me do this. I hope you can see this. I'll read this to you. I have this blog. It says why all false teachers use the straw man, false narrative, and never debate by the rules. No, they set these fake debates up. Now, I'm going to actually show you one where Jews, where a Jew for Judaism, he has a full-blown 
they call it debate. It's a fake straw man of a Masonic Jew. Oh, it's hilarious. But anyway, here's an example of straw man. Misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to refute. Watch. The boss, the guy comes into his boss. And given my contributions to this paper, I think that I deserve to share credit with the first author. So the boss says, so fame is more important to you than science, huh? That's so sad. What? I didn't say that. Oh, so now I'm senile too. It's, it's a little cartoon, but it shows you how they set this up. Before you ever try to debate someone or call in, because Dr. Brown is always saying, call in with your hardest questions. Call in, call in. Well, I put this to the test once, and I called into a talk show, syndicated national talk show host uh, for the Catholic laity, and this guy is a hardcore Catholic. And I just called him and I said, hi, listener, da, da, da. And I said, real simple question. I said, why, just as w among one of thousands of things, why isn't purgatory in the Bible? And now, guess what he did? I timed it. He went on for 47 some minutes nonstop, did not let me debate, did not let me challenge. And first he said, oh, well, it's not in the Bible, da, 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 but it really is because of da, da, da. And when he was done, he completely made it look like I came in with a question like, please tell me I'm struggling. I want to find this. I know I believe in it, but how can I support it in the Bible? Yep. Listen, it's just staggering what they do. And here's the Jews for Judaism here. This video, it's an hour long debate. It's a straw man debate. We see full discussions here, how the false teachers use this as I wrote. It's truly painful people. Make yourself watch it, you'll learn so much. The Messianic Jew, Jew he nails it by basically saying to the rabbi, look, you know the Bible better than I do. <laughs> He nails it right here. You look, Rabbi, you know the Bible better than I do. What? What? And then he says, but, and, and you've been stalking nonstop, which he has. But I, but I promise you, but I'm going to prove Jesus Christ. And I promise you that he is. And you're going to find out real soon. I pray that you don't find out too late. I'll pray for you. Yes. The only thing he did, the Messianic Jew said the whole night. But guess what? It was the very end. He just put it in there. But the hour was all controlled by the Jew proving, making the Messianic Jew look like he did know scripture. Even using mangled scripture, regurgitating it and feeding it back to the Messianic Jew. The Messianic Jew was just nodding. It was a slam dunk. The Jews... The Jew for Jesus gets his butt handed to him by the rabbi. Just like that time the Muslim scholar just destroyed Dr. Wood on the Tawheed versus the Trinity. Wood was trying to defend the Trinity. Can you believe that with the Bible? You can't do it. And the Muslim scholar tore him up. He said, your word's not even listed in your Bible. Your word talks about this. Your word doesn't say you have three separate gods. And how do you say it does? It was unbelievable. The Messianic Jew never uses the Bible to dispute the heirs of the rabbi. He just listens to him patiently. He's like a little schoolboy. Why didn't the Messianic Jew say, Look, rabbi, you're talking about the second advent of Jesus. When, when the rabbi, what he's trying to do is prove that the birth of Jesus Christ was not the Messianic kingdom. Of course it wasn't. Okay, uh, my listeners, I don't, I know that people are watching or listening, you're missing what I'm saying. I feel that. Okay. What I'm saying is a straw man argument, the way these Jews, the Messianics set these up with the Jews, the Jewish rabbis, and that's why they're welcome to debate. They don't rightly divide scripture. They don't, they're not a workman that can show themselves approved unto God. They don't know the word of God. And they don't know how to rightly divide it. So what happened, the rabbi shrewdly was using Messianic scripture. Now, now, reader, listener, you're thinking, what's that? What's Messianic scripture? Was using 
scripture that's referring to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ after the second advent and was using those scriptures to prove that Jesus was not in on his birth was not what it said. But the Messianic Jew could not defend it. It was totally controlled by the rabbi. If only I was there, I'd say, Rabbi, stop again. You're talking about the second advent of Jesus, not his first advent, not when he came as a child. Another issue with the straw man, this is very similar, like Dr. Ask Dr. Brown, is that similar to all Jews for Christ that I know of, they suffer from a major identity crisis. They want to prove they're, that they are 100% Jewish and not Christian, which is not biblical at all. And that's why Mir Tzisvati could not stand his young uh, tour group using the word Christian. And, and I guarantee he was worried. They were probably going out there saying, I'm going to go talk to the Jews about Jesus Christ. I'm, you, know, they're, they're, you should have seen the looks of some of those students. Like, what? I'm not supposed to say I'm a Christian. What's extremely important here, do your research. We're witnessing the Hegelian dialectic at work. When we see two seemingly opposing views that seemingly are working against each other, but in the end, they're really working for a final outcome. And that's the synthesis. So I wrote, I said, I would love, in the spirit of love, Rabbi, I send this to you. I would love to openly debate, not in the straw man, straw man format that false teachers use, but in a true point by point debate with the rules of debate. I was a debater in high school. In university, we would do debates on uh, white papers. I know about debate. I know there are rules. There's protocol. So I sent him my email address. I said, please, I want to, I want to debate this. And I want you to set this up on YouTube. I want to be the defender of the faith. And I promise you that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will use the word of God, my King James Bible to correct this rabbi. He says that how dare that I guarantee you, I'm not going to tell that rabbi that he knows the Bible better than me. <laughs> I'll tell him the truth. Rabbi, you have no idea of what you speak of. Rabbi, the scripture you use is twisted. It's taken out of context and your translation is not true. This is exactly, precisely what the scripture is saying. I will use hermeneutics point by point on each scripture. Thank you. So never heard back, never heard back. I sent Dr. Brown. On one of his preposterous little videos he was doing on trying to tell people no hide laws that's like santa claus it doesn't exist and then i said no i want to debate this i don't have i have you got rid of uh, adam green's no longer on there of course adam green got way off track and actually started throwing the baby out of the bathwater and became in some manner like anti-semitic but he was gone he's gone he's not on youtube anymore but I begged Dr. Brown to uh, send him a couple emails. And finally, someone from his staff said, send us your credentials and your points. I did. And they said, no, you don't have a PhD. I have a bachelor's degree in economics and, and language, but I do not have a doctorate in theology. So, nope, we're not going to talk to you. You don't have the credentials. So, let me... Finish this, finish this. So please put your thoughts here, listener, and know that it's so scary. We right now are in the end times, man. Israel is getting exactly the same false prophets that Jer were in Jeremiah's day. That means we're gonna go home soon. It's gonna happen, it's all here. All the pieces are in place. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, and my heart's desire is as is was Paul's, and I pray, Lord, for Israel, that they might be saved. Lord, I pray that eyes be open, 
those who do not know you as our personal Savior, may they come forward, Lord, and then know that the gospel is simple as believing only in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Lord. I pray and ask in Jesus' name, even so, come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.